happened. Fest? Yeah, Rack City Fest. <laughs> that happened a couple weekend or yeah, a couple weeks ago. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Um, we had a on campus event called Rack Fest, and it had live music from 11 to 4, and a bake sale, and some good times, and all. We made 100 and some dollars, 165 dollars, something like that. So it's pretty. Pretty cool for our first fundraiser to actually have people show up and us to get what we want. Right. So a lot of fundraising is happening. What exactly are like are the goals of the fundraising? Oh, the lofty goals. Yeah. We are trying to buy an FM transmitter so that we can actually be found on a dial instead of on the internet, which not everyone has in their car. It turns out yeah. not everyone has a Hummer. Yeah. Um, so are there have any stages of the FM transmitter is it in the beginning stages or very beginning stages we kind of just decided i guess earlier this year when we when we saw that we had a really good crew of raq people that we could probably make some things happen so we're like we should get an fm transmitter and really make this thing actually school again mm -hmm. but i guess it used to be pretty cool here and i don't know i wasn't here but i've heard good things sure um so how would somebody get involved with raq if somebody's looking to be involved with the station well you could uh wander up here and talk to Dr. T, a.k.a. Patricia Turner, or Maureen McCollum. She works at WLSU in the basement dungeons of Whitney Center. Either one of those two are our advisors, or you can listen to the show and find one of the DJs walking around campus and ha harass them enough, and I'm sure they'd find the right people for you. Okay, so how can you listen to RAQ? Um, right now, currently we broadcast over a charter, I believe, through science and technologies I don't understand. And then uh, we're also at uh, live365.com, search RIQ Radio, and you can listen to us there. And it's supposed to be streaming on our website, which is rackradio.com, but I don't know. I, have, I don't have a computer. <laughs> um, so what kind of shows are All on kinds of RIQ shows. Radio? We got 90s music, some, some more that are like sex music, or sex music, rock and roll, that's what we got. <laughs> but no, we have, uh, one is more like talking with, uh, just talking about issues, kind of like anything from aliens to conspiracy to money problems, all those types of things, plus a lot of just student, basically open forums for kids just to say things on the air. But as long as it's good things, we're pretty okay with it. So you do a show with Jordy Ford. Do you want to talk about your show a little bit? Our show is called uh, Work in Progress. It airs on Mondays from 7 to 8. It's oldies, newies, goodies, baddies, doesn't matter. We play them all. And then it's a lot of, a lot of social commentary and a lot of try to have live musicians. I shouldn't say a lot. We try to have a live musician come every time, so that's pretty much what we do for our show. Who have you guys had in the past? You've had quite a few people come um, in. We've had uh, Frankie, Frankie Ray. He's came in. He's a local artist. He sings a lot like Bob Dylan songs and those type of songs. We've had uh, Simple Rogues come in. They're an Irish folk band. They're super awesome. That was actually our first people we had in. We had a rapper, Blake Hyphen Murphy. I don't know if you've ever seen him. He frequents the root note. So pretty much all sorts. Well, that's really interesting. So how about goals for next year as far as well, getting more people uh, or the besides FM the frequency? Or FM frequency transmitter, we would like to increase our, our on-air time from not being on just in the morning but poss or just at night to being maybe being open all day. And we'd like to see an increase in people using the station, joining the station, appreciating the station. Mm-hmm. I know that from the beginning of the school year, there's been a lot more people um, who have gotten involved just with this school year. So. Indeed. So, um, I mean, that's good for the future. We hope that that will carry on the next year. Hopefully with these fundraisers and stuff like that, people are like, RIQ Radio, I remember that. Maybe I should check it out. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you think campus radio is important, either for people involved or for people who listen? Um, it gives people a place to talk about things that maybe they wouldn't have an opportunity to talk about, especially being a host. Like, I can pretty much talk about anything I want, so whenever my Mondays are terrible, like everyone else's Mondays, I just go and vent on the air, and I get, well, not credit, but I feel good about myself about it. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to check out RAQ at the Root Note this Saturday, and we will be right back, but first, let's take a look at some of those perfect pets in need of adoption. Come and meet Mandy May, a five-month-old pit bull terrier. She's always ready to play and has a spunky personality. This is Mary Posa, a one-year-old female with medium-length hair. She's already been neutered and is very sweet. Here's Clementine, a four-year-old female domestic short hair. 
She is very affectionate and plays well with other pets. And this fine lady is Goldie, a nine-year-old Pomeranian. Nowadays, all she wants to do is snuggle and give lots of love. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. The UW Lacrosse baseball team took home its 13th WEAC championship last Monday. The Eagles have had a great season, but actually won the conference crown thanks to a sweep by UW-Whitewater over UW-Stevens Point in a doubleheader. This is the first title for the Eagles since 2000. The team t tied for a school record for a single season victories with a doubleheader sweep at UW-Superior on April 29th, leaving the team at 27-9 overall and 18-2 in the WEAC Conference. UWL will be in the top seed and will host the WEAC Tournament May 11th through the 12th. The tournament winners will receive the automatic bid into the NCAA Division III Championship. UWL currently has a five-game lead in this year's league standings with four games remaining. UW Stevens Point is in second place with UW Whitewater rounding out the third place spot. UWL is currently 13-1 at home this season. Good luck, boys, and good job. Sticking with the diamond, we'll head over to the UWL softball team who dropped a WEAC doubleheader to UW Stout this past Sunday. In the opener, UWL took a 1-0 lead in the top of the second inning. Katie Fink had a two-out run scoring single to knock in Allie Meyer, who had a single earlier in the frame. UW Stout tied the game in the bottom of the second as Aaron Moss scored from third with Sam Hastings getting caught stealing second base. The Eagles cut the lead to 4-2 and two in the fourth as Allison Hennessy scored on Fink's second two-out RBI single of the game. The Blue Devils took home the win with a 4-2 victory over the Lady Eagles. And in the nightcap, UW Stout took a 1-0 lead with in the bottom at the second as Moss scored on a UWL error. The Eagles come back to score five runs in the top of the third inning. UW Stout added a run in the fifth inning on a run scoring double from Aaron Moss, bringing the game to its final score of 7-5. The Lady Eagles will take on UW Superior at home this Sunday. UWL has named Charlie King as head of its women's and men's swimming and diving program. King, who will replace Rich Pine, who following a 30-year leading the Eagles, retired at the conclusion of the 2011-12 season. Along with serving as head swimming and diving coach, King will be an instructor in the exercise and sports science department. King was previously the assistant swimming and diving coach and recruiting coordinator at the University of Utah and was Utah's director of camps and co-taught a swimming coach, a coaching swimming class. As assistant coach at Utah, nine student athletes set school records and four competed in USA Olympic trials. King says that he is excited to have the opportunity to lead the college, a college program with such a great academic and athletic history. And that's all we have for this week's sports. Oh, exciting. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Lots to talk about. And what else is exciting is that we are graduating we are, this May. We are, unfortunately. May. Yeah. <laughs> I want to stay forever. This was our last week in Leading WMCM. That's mm -hmm. right. You girls have never met me. You were lucky. <laughs> this is true. That's right. <laughs> we do have a couple other seniors, too, if you guys want to come on up, say your goodbyes here. Mm -hmm. Overall, really good. A good year. group of seniors mm -hmm. that we exactly. have this exactly. year. We'll get camera one on your yep. It's been a lot of fun here at WMCM. We just yep. like to thank Dr. T for mm -hmm. everything she's done, everybody else. Yep. You guys have anything else to say up here? Definitely. Thanks, Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. And thank the viewers, you. thank you for watching. From all of us <laughs> yeah. here at WMCM, we wish you a happy summer.